Welcome back to this series I'm doing on the HR2510. Today, we're going to take a deeper look into the PLL board. So I'm following the same theme that I uh, started on the uh, last video, and that's basically showing some video and some detail on things that we just haven't seen uh, particularly on some videos on uh, or lacking of video on uh, YouTube in regards to certain things so you know I'm not somebody who's just going to regurgitate what we've already seen but uh, hopefully I can provide uh, newcomers you know all the old hands that have worked in these radios you know uh, I'm not really going to be showing anything that they haven't seen already, and I'm sure they could uh, teach me a lot. But uh, for the people who have not spent any time with this radio, and basically it could be the first time they're uh, they're uh, taking the covers off, uh, those are going to uh, benefit on uh, what I'm going to show you today. So having said that, and uh, that's my disclaimer, let's uh, take a closer look at this uh, PLL board on the 2510. So in this case here, this is a, a donor radio I have of mine. There's, there's some serious problems with the uh, main board and uh, I pointed those out on uh, part one of this uh, series. And uh, this particular uh, radio, you know, there's a lot of goodness still to be had out of it, but uh, it's just a donor radio now. So Everything's still plugged in, and you know we can take a look and see that uh, no more. You know I've cleaned it up a little bit, gotten rid of glue in certain areas, and that's probably what you need to do. Step number one is to remove that glue, and on the CPU chip here, we can see that uh, close to the uh, resistor pack there, there's usually a giant blob of glue that you're going to have to get rid of. I'm not going to show you the details on how to get rid of that, but uh, it is a chore and uh, you have to work at it, uh, you know, with a pick and uh, some heat and possibly some uh, uh, glue removal uh, solvent. And I'll uh, I'll show you a little bit later that it's it's been already documented by other people, but I'll I'll see if I can pull one out. So this board still has all the stock electrolytics, so that would be uh, number two in the plan would be to replace all of those. So there's also going to be, you know, uh, issues with these regulators. They're just kind of glued. There's our key word again, glued onto the board. So you're going to have to get rid of that glue. So there's one regulator. There's another one. So taking the board out is uh, is not really that difficult. You know, there's some screws on the side here, two on each side that you have to get rid of, and then you just pop these connectors off. Really, no big deal, you know, about marking them and being worried about, you know, putting them back in. You know, because they, you know, this all this wire is formed in here, and uh, you know, once you pop it out it's pretty well just going to go back into the same place so you don't have to really worry about you know all these connectors you know going in the wrong place you won't have an issue so there's a couple coax here you know be careful when you're pulling those out you know don't use uh, any kind of tool just gently pull on them and, and pull those out so there's one there and then there's another one here that you have to pull out so there's a couple coax so 
I'm not going to work on this board, but what I'm going to do is I've got this other board that's part of the the one Frankenville that I do have working. And uh, we're going to spend some time with this one. So if you take a look at this, we can see that uh, I've uh, cleaned up the glue and uh, on these regulators I've actually uh, glued a little heat sink on there. So that will definitely help with the uh, dissipation. Okay, so not all the action is happening on the top side of this board. Let me pull the board off and we can just see there's four corners, screws that'll uh, remove this bottom structure. And we can take a look at what's on the other side of this board. <laughs> you will be surprised. This is the back side of the PLO board. And as we can see, we do have some SMD components on here as well too. Let's take a closer look. All right, well, time to change some electrolytics. Let me change those then. Okay, this PLO board has been recapped. It's been cleaned, glue removed and it's ready to be installed back into the radio. One note I'll make here is that uh, this is a dual sided board so uh, removing capacitors is a little more difficult and also putting them back in is a little more difficult than just a single-sided board. You have to make sure that uh, you're getting solder on the top side of that board as well too. So electrolytics replaced, glue removed, and I forgot to mention that that is a solvent that I use to uh, soften up the glue and then you just use some uh, dental picks to remove and also uh, applying heat from an air gun uh, was very helpful as well too so that's a that's a chore to get rid of that glue but we've done that on this and for the, every other 2510 or 2600 series wherever that glue is you got to get rid of it or it's going to eat away at the components. I just love looking at this electronics. You know this board is uh, 30 years old and uh, it looks like it just came off the factory floor and we've got new electrolytics in there this should go for many more years to come. So thanks for watching. See you next time.